Hello everyone, my name is Lanso90 and welcome to my first review. Uh, this first review I'm going to do is on Tropico 5. It's a uh, city building game in which you are a dictator of a small island in the Caribbean. So uh, I haven't quite decided what would be best. I don't know if I should start with the good things or start with the bad things. I think for this one I'm going to start with the good and uh, go into the bad and then kind of recap at the end. And uh, you guys can tell me at the end if you would prefer it the other way around or if this was a good call. Anyway, first thing I want to talk about is the campaign because uh, the campaign was actually surprisingly good. Uh, all the writing was very funny. It's pretty goofy, but it's always got a few chuckles out of me. Uh, but later in the campaign, it had a surprising twist, which uh, actually got me even more interested in it. It uh, added some depth that I wasn't really expecting. It kind of caught me off guard and uh, really impressed me. However, the ending of the game was... Uh, kind of boring and uh which was kind of unfortunate because they kind of got me going with uh how good the plot was up till then it was uh very entertaining and then just kind of just okay it's over <laughs> i don't know what that was about but the uh voice actors for the most part are really funny and they do a very good job portraying their nationalities and stuff uh Weirdly, though, it was mainly the male voice actors that were good. The female ones always came off as annoying. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know if it was just the writing. I think the writing might have just been bad for them. But they all had very... None of them were very... Good. <laughs> That's the only way I can put it. Sometimes I had to just lower the volume because they were screeching too much. <laughs> but for the most part, it was very good and very funny. Uh, the music to the game is very, is also very entertaining. It was very good music. Uh, unfortunately, I've heard that if you have the music running and you post the video on YouTube, it'll get flagged because like the music is like third party or something. So uh, I can't actually show you guys the music, but yeah, it is actually pretty good. Another good thing about the movie, uh, the movie, <laughs> about the game, is, uh, it's a, it's a pretty simplistic city builder in, in a good way. Uh, it's not nearly as complex as something like SimCity. I don't, maybe not the newest one. I haven't tried the newest one, but I kind of get the impression that it's been toned down. But previous SimCities, it's, it's kind of hard to tell if anything's going to work. But uh, in this one, you really have a sense of control over everything you do. Uh, let me click on a building here. You see, you can change the budget, and that will uh, increase how uh, well or badly they perform. Like, uh, on the ma uh, medium budget, this ship dock was uh, operating. A ship would arrive every five months. And I brought it to four, and now it's every four months. So you can easily tell when something improves. Uh, the power plants, if you increase the money, they generate more power. So you have a very good sense of control that uh, all your decisions mean something, and you can quickly make financial decisions to try to save your thing if your balance is going under. However, on the same, on the same side of the token, it also seems a little bit arbitrary. Um, I don't know if I can find a specific example, but let's say the military structures. You, There's nothing here to tell you if giving them more money helps them in battle at all. Their job quality says it goes higher, but eh, there's not very many ways to tell. And that's the same with a lot of these other structures. Is can't really tell with the farms if you increase their money, if they're increasing output very quickly. One overall problem that 
covers a bunch of different things is everything gets calculated month by month more or less except when you immediately when you buy something from the build menu then it automatically goes down but everything else is calculated by the month and uh, that has some really bad effects like if I was to change the power plant and give it like less money it'll still say it's producing all this power and I won't be able to tell until next month how much power gets produced so it's not easy to fine tune it as I go I just have to kind of change the value and then hope for the best next month um, one thing that was always always a very big issue with the balance see the economy screen and the balance it says I have making negative 24,000 this month well the biggest issue with what it's showing here is it counts construction which is very very dumb the, so I have to say it's the absolute worst thing in this game everything else everything else is great compared to this this construction cost like I said earlier as soon as you build a building this month this value right here goes down this is your treasury it goes down immediately. But. So you're already paying for it. So if you go to the balance screen. Uh, it's counting in the construction cost here. So I'm going negative. With my balance. Even though it's already been counted for. It's like getting counted twice. Which. Uh, it's not really an issue. In some ways, because like, oh, I can just ignore that number. But basically, basically, I have to redo the math of the other cost and the building budget's cost. That's what I'm actually losing per month. I'm not losing this per month because this has already been accounted for. So I'm not actually going negative. I'm actually making quite a bit of money. That's why it's really ridiculous. I really wish that was gone. I don't even know if they'll be able to take that out. The game is very new, so maybe they can fix something like that, but I don't know. It seems like a major thing on that balance sheet. And uh, I do not like it. I do not like it, Sam I am. <laughs> Another thing that uh, this one you can kind of give or take as a bad thing or not is uh, the game's very mouse driven. There's pretty much no hotkeys. So let's see if we can. Take a look at the hotkeys. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hotkeys. Everything else is unassigned. And not everything is here either. So very little hotkeys, so it's might not be easy as to micromanage as it might be for other games. But since it's all mouse driven, the UI and everything is very simple. That's uh, very simple to do things, just change money or just click on upgrades, which is uh, very easy. It'd be very good for people who are new to the city building genre to not have to use their keyboard at all, just be able to click on things. But uh, there are times where it's uh, a problem. Uh, specifically, if we go to the build menu and try to build just the, the Teamster's office or something, Suddenly, the scroll wheel doesn't work anymore. The scroll wheel starts rotating the building, and now there's no way to zoom out. Except the page down and page up keys, but like we looked at that window, those weren't listed. Which uh, leads into another thing. is uh, The game doesn't explain everything. It does explain a lot of things throughout the game. I didn't, didn't play the tutorial, but I figured things out well enough that I could do it on my own. And a lot of these missions would uh, tell me what to build and stuff. And they explain what the buildings would do. However, they wouldn't explain other things. Like, for example, when I did the first researches in the game. Farm upgrades. Unlock plantation upgrades. What I assumed that did was I assumed that all my farms, as soon as I researched that, outputted more. Because that's what most games would do. 
But uh, no, I didn't ex- didn't find out until like I was halfway done with the game that this little thing pops up here, the upgrades tab, and then you can go in and click on them. You have to do each one individually. And I was like, oh, I really wish they would have explained that sooner. That probably would have paid off a huge amount. But I think the biggest thing oops, is uh, they didn't explain the dry dock. And this is probably the most important building in the game, and it just does not mention it at all. Just let's look at the research. The compass, dry dock. Building's dry dock, and to affect the tropic and map is revealed. So when you start the game, the only the nearby area around the city is visible, and then you have to explore everywhere else. But uh, when you get the compass, then uh, the whole map gets found. So I kind of assumed that was what the main thing was about, and I just dismissed the dry dock because it just looks like like a military building, and the military doesn't take a big effect in the game, and we'll get to that. So I was like, uh, I'm just not going to worry about that. No one ever told me to build it or anything. So I was like, oh, whatever. Well, turns out that the upgrades in here, particularly this one, each dock provides one extra trade ship. So these are the docks, and each one provides one trade ship. And you need to do a lot of trading early on in order to make money. So what I was doing was I was building like 12 docks because there's just not, not enough ships. And uh, I did that until like the last two missions of the game because I didn't know that the dry dock existed. And then I researched that and then everything was doubled. And I was like, oh my god, that's the most important thing in the game. Why didn't they tell me about that? Which was really not okay. <laughs> Anyway, let's get into the military. The uh, military, you know, I could dismiss it since it's a city building game. It shouldn't be that important. But you do get attacks, at least in the campaign. It actually happens quite a bit. And uh, it was just, you don't have any control over them. If someone attacks you, a little icon will appear above the building, kind of like this one. And uh, your troops will try to make their way there, and their troops will try to make their way there. And the only thing you can do is if multiple buildings are being under attack, you can tell them which one is most important. But they get caught up in the buildings a lot, and sometimes they'll go to the far away destination, even though like something closer is under attack, and you cannot tell them where to go. And there are different city building games, say uh, Door Fortress, where you do get direct control of the military. It's usually the only thing that you do get direct control over. And you really need it in this game, because sometimes you'll get a rebel attack, and uh, all my all my military buildings are on the beachfront, because that's where invading militaries come from. But the But the rebels will spawn, like, way over here. <laughs> and there's nothing I can do. They're not going to make it over there. Like I can't tell them to go over there. They just kind of waddle over there on their own time. And uh, it's almost like the rebels are actually smart about what they pick. They'll pick something like a mine, which is even further away. I'll never get to it in time. Buildings blow up really quickly. And as soon as they blow up, you pretty much lose that battle. Everyone disperses. So the military control is horrible. And people also, when I get into firefights between two groups, they take a long time to kill each other. They'll dump clips into each other. It's like it's like a new Call of Duty game or something. You'll they'll dump ten clips into each other and no one will die. Uh, it takes a very long time and like production and everything gets halted when you're under attack. So that's really annoying. But, everything considered, I think it is a very good game. It's the most fun I've had in a city builder for a long time. Uh, the simplistic, uh, simplified kind of controls and the amount of uh, control you can wield over your economy makes it all, makes it very easy to figure out what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. So I think it'd be a great game for new city people new to the city building genre. Uh, 
for more advanced players, maybe not. There's not a whole lot of, uh, not too much fine tuning you can do. But, uh, overall, it was a very fun game. And I would recommend it. I would give it a 8 out of 10 if I had to give it a score. So, uh, I hope you all found this review useful and have a good day.